So this April marked the fifth year anniversary of when I joined Toastmasters. I joined Toastmasters back in April 2005. And I, I wanted to take a trip down memory lane and I went back to my CTM manual. And I, I was trying to evaluate my progress at Toastmasters. I mean, have I become a good speaker? Right, let's be honest about it. And I went back to my first speech and I said, this is April 29, 2002. It says, eloquent speaker, a bit fast, hands in pockets, uh, no eye contact, no <laughs> smile. So, but the problem is, I'm still getting the same criticism. So I'm not improving. I'm not a JFK yet. I'm not a Winston Churchill. I'm not even. I'm not even a Bill Clinton. I'm not a Bush. Well, maybe I'm a Bush. I'm better than Bush. <laughs> but that's not saying much. So what? What has impeded my progress? How come I'm not making enough progress? Why aren't I satisfied? Well, first of all, I, I was traumatized by very harsh criticism by Sean P. by <laughs> Dave Henry, by Eugene Tang, they traumatize me. And my, my view of critics, like critics are like eunuchs watching a harem, right? They, they know how it's done in detail, they see it done every day, but they can't do it. So as far as I'm concerned, with your critics, pay no attention to your critics, don't even ignore them with critics. Now, another thing, I hate taboos. I have to tell you, I've been in China all this time. I hate taboos. They're just not American. I don't like taboos. I don't like being censored, right? Well, what is this with taboos? When they have a meeting, uh, what are the ta uh, when we have taboo subjects, what are they? And the, mem the Toastmasters members, oh, sex, and politics, and religion, and bad taste. Well, add some more, why don't you? Let's add some more while we're at it. You're happy to be censored? Come on, get with it. Uh, they're taking away your rights, right? Sex, so what, sex? Sex, we're all products of sex, right? How can it be bad? It's going on out there right now, everywhere, every minute. It's common, it's nothing special, it's even boring. Sex is boring, right? Uh, politics. Politics is the second oldest profession. And it, it bears a lot of resemblance to the the first oldest pro profession, I admit. But politics is just power. Politics is life, it's relationships. All, re all, all life is based on politics. So you can't avoid politics, it's just a myth. Now, religion, well, this is, isn't this a socialist country, right? And, and Marx said that religion is the opiate of the masses, religion is lies that are constructed to keep the working class happy in their inferior position. So if we agree that religion is a set of lies, then what are we worried about? What harm could they do? Religion is harmless. I want to I want to uh, list my own taboos. If I had my druthers, what taboos? Okay, no more speeches about time management, please. <laughs> right? They're not working. All right, this is Shanghai. No one writes a schedule in Shanghai. People cancel appointments, and they don't come to meet you, and we don't need those speeches. Uh, what's another one? No more speeches with the, with the message, just do it. All right? I, I hate that message, just do it. You, just do it, you've done it, get over it, move on. We, 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 we've been there, okay? No more just do it speeches. No more speeches with stuffed animals as props. I can't stand that. Uh, no more speeches by young ladies about finding their handsome prince. They're not out there. There are 45-year-old toads with pot bellies and bottles of Viagra out there. You're not going to find a, a handsome prince out there. Okay, so I think uh, the taboos really rankle me. I can't take them. Another thing, I've been exposed to very bad speeches. I've been exposed to very bad evaluations. I don't like expatriates who are what I call apologizers and qualifiers. Qualifier apologizers. Most of these guys that just came to China, they don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to offend the Chinese, right? So they say, what do you think about uh, uh, Jack Smith? What do you think about Shanghai traffic? And he gets up there and he's like, uh, I, don't want to say, I don't want to say it's good. I don't want to say it's bad. This is my opinion. It's not your opinion. You have your opinion. I have my opinion. Um, don't take offense to what I'm going to say, okay, please. And um, I, I think it can be good, but it can be bad. But it, it depends on who you are and, and where you come from. 
So I'm not going to say it's good, but I'm not going to say it's bad. And I have my own opinions, but I don't necessarily agree with them. Thank you. <laughs> and that's, to me, I would say, just say it. Get on with it, say it, please. And, and if you have an opinion, speak it out. Um, people who talk about talking, I don't care for too much either. I'm going to say something that's highly relevant. And I'm going to make three points. And I'm going to support them with evidence. I'm going to begin with an introduction. I'm going to end with an ending. And I'm going to talk in detail about each of my points. I'm going to try not to leave anything out that's important. And I'll, I'll try not to include anything that's extraneous. But oh, sorry, out of time. I'll catch you next time. So talking about talking annoys me. Um, when I was, another thing uh, that has hurt me, I have to admit this is my fault too. Uh, I think I've hurt myself. Because when I saw a video of myself speaking, I was horrified. I, I, I couldn't watch it. I had to shut it off. And it was, a, it was a speaking competition I won. And I thought, he's rambling, he's, he's pedantic. I couldn't watch it. I really couldn't watch it. So I've held myself back, my own limitations. Um, and also, I haven't learned how to speak Chinese. And that's unforgivable. So I still rely on translators. Translators don't work, right? I, I met a very pretty girl recently, and she couldn't speak any English. So I had this so-called friend come with me to translate. And I noticed that like the translations are coming very long all of a sudden. I said, well, what is she saying? It's like, please be patient. Please be patient. <laughs> right? And they're talking, they're talking. I said, but I just said yes. What are you, why, is, why does it take 50 minutes to tell them yes? And then they said, I'm oh, oh, sorry, Murphy. She says, you are not suitable for her. And I am more suitable. So excuse me. <laughs> and they went off together. I lost her. So I hurt myself. Uh, my experience in Japanese Toastmasters were not very helpful. I was in Japan. As many of you, of you know, I went to Japan last year. And I, I, I didn't like it, so I came back to Shanghai. I saw Japanese Toastmasters in business. And believe me, they're far, far different uh, than Shanghai Toastmasters. They're over-programmed. Uh, I went to the EVP of Hiroshima Toastmasters. I said, uh, excuse me, Tanaka-san, I would like to give a speech. He said, yes, Murphy-san, I understand. Uh, we, have a, we have a slot open in 2009. Could you please begin preparation now? So, and their table topics were bizarre. They do it reverse there. They do table topics at the end of the speeches first, which I didn't have a problem with. But the guy has it planned out who's going to give each table topic answer. It's like, okay, Yamamoto-san, your question. And um, Hiroya-san, your question. And I'm in the back, like, wait, hey, wait, I want to speak, hey! I said, please, Murphy, sit down. And so I felt stifled. They have no taboos in Japan, but it doesn't matter because you don't get a chance to speak. <laughs> so they censored me in Japan, and I'm glad to be back here. Now, I don't want to be too pessimistic. I know that some people have said that I'm a nattering nabob of negativism sometimes, and I try not to be. So let's look at the sunny side of things, right? Because Toastmasters is growing here in, in China, and we have 11 clubs now, right? And we have Toastmaster fanatics. Like you have people who attend four meetings a week. And that's great. I think that you know, they're spending practically like one um, fifth of their waking hours shuttling to and from meetings and going back and forth and, and giving their all to Toastmasters. I think we need more clubs. I think I have some ideas for clubs. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see them expand maybe I don't know, something original, maybe like a smoker's Toastmasters, or, or like gay Toastmasters, or uh, Playboy Toastmasters. And then, if you don't like Playboy Toastmasters, you can go to Ladies Only Toastmasters. <laughs> so you, get, you don't have any of those annoying guys you know, coming up to ask you, asking you for your phone number. I think that might be a good idea. And what else? That kids Toastmasters might be a good idea. And we need maybe a Toastmasters hotline, a Toastmasters restaurant. We need to think big and, and get a Toastmasters for every segment of, of Shanghai. So, and another good thing is that you'll have me to kick around for a little while longer. And I will be here giving speeches to rain on your parade, to darken your horizon, 
to tweak your, never mind, and to also to, <laughs> yes, and to exasperate your patience. Thank you.